Good morning and a blessed mo Monday to each and every one of you and thank you for joining me today as I go live with another sermon. As I always do, please share this sermon so others may hear the message that you are hearing now that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus from his Father has for each and every one of us. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfect in us. This comes from 1 John 4.12, King James Version. And the message that John is trying to tell us here is simple, and it's to the point that although no man has ever seen the true face of Father God, we are each his temple. And we dwell, and he dwells in that temple with us, along with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And we learn what unconditional true love is from our Heavenly Father. And we are perfected in that love, because he is perfect love. Today's sermon is receiving the Holy Spirit. And we're going to have two verses on receiving the Holy Spirit. And the third verse on receiving the Holy Spirit is the benefits that we receive from our Heavenly Father through Christ of the Holy Spirit. Now Jesus tells us that he will ask the Father as he did with the Apostles when he ascended into heaven to send us a friend, that friend being the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, guides us on our daily walk helps us with decisions to make, points out dangers, trials and tribulations, roadblocks, obstacles, and gets us closer with our Heavenly Father through Christ Jesus. Now all we have to do is accept Jesus as the Son of the Living God and as our Lord and Savior and be baptized and believe. But you see there's more to believing in order to be saved. There's faith, and there's the work of faith and releasing that faith and working on that relationship with our Lord and Savior and having the Holy Spirit help us develop that deeper relationship with Christ. So it all goes hand in hand and it all takes work, not just believing and not just having faith. And by doing this, we must not forget the most important thing. That is to repent our sins, to tell Jesus to forgive us our sins, so his Father will forgive us our sins. And we must do this on a daily basis, meaning every time we sin, we should repent. Now we're all going to forget, myself included, to ask for forgiveness every single time because the day is busy, our mind is cluttered with thoughts time and time again. But the idea is to try to stay focused and disciplined on the repentance of our sins and trying not to repeat the same sin. Now that's a little easier said than done, but as long as our Lord and Savior knows we're trying and we are repenting and we are truly, you got to generally uh, repent and truly repent, then we're forgiven. And when we run out of words, this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. And we run out of words or we get too flustered or frustrated and we get upset and adoring all the turmoil. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Now listen, he takes our prayers that we cannot say and brings them to the Father because he knows what to tell the Father on our behalf. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 2.38, King James Version. What's Peter telling us? Would he? Well, again, if we really do Bible study and really focus and meditate on the Word and ask Jesus to help us understand what's being said in the Father's Word in his Gospel, it's very straight and honest and to the point and the heart of the matter. Peter's telling each of us to change our life and to change it for the better. And one way to start that is if you're not already baptized, is to be baptized. 
so we can be forgiven of our sins. Because if we're not baptized, then we really, in essence, don't accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Therefore, we cannot truly be forgiven of our sins. That's what the Bible says, and that's really the truth in what the Bible says and what Jesus says, and what this is what Peter's message to us is. And you don't have to be rebaptized. Some people do. It's okay. There's no harm in that. But once you're baptized, you're baptized. The thing is, is accepting uh, our Lord and Savior. Now, you need to believe that and have faith on that, not just words. But you need to meditate on the gospel of Jesus and meditate on what he's saying, working on that relationship. That's all Jesus is asking us to do, is to trust, believe, read, meditate, and work on it. And as Jesus puts it, he is the way. And that's what the Holy Spirit tries to guide us and let us know. That he is not part of the way, he's not an option, he is the only way, the way. That's when Jesus said, I am the way. He's the only truth, he is the truth, and he is the life. Given to him by Father God, because he's the only true representative that can represent our Heavenly Father to its truest fashion. As Jesus said, my Father is in me and I am in the Father. Even though the Father is in us, each of us, because we are his temple, what Jesus is saying, my Father is in me, is Jesus is sinless. We are full of sin, Jesus is sinless. So he can only be the perfect lamb. He can only be the Lion of Judah. He can only be the perfect representative of who our Heavenly Father really is. In whom he ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 1.13 Let's take a look at what Paul is getting across with us in this one. He's saying that it is only through Jesus that we have the Holy Spirit. It's because of Jesus that we have the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one who asked his Father to send us the Holy Spirit, the Helper. So it's because of him. Everything we have, forgiveness of sins, baptism, salvation, love, truth, peace, is because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and washing our sins with his blood and paying our debt. So through him, the Heavenly Father gives us all our blessings and his forgiveness and his spirit. And this brings us closer to God, especially in prayer. And because Jesus is the bridge and the gap to the Father, and closes that gap, and is the only way through to the Father, we can, because of Jesus saying so, we can directly speak to the Father in Jesus' name. Now, with our Lord asking his Heavenly Father to send us in with this friend, we got to be aware that receiving the Holy Spirit, as I said before in the beginning of the sermon, it does come with benefits. And part of the benefits, and one of the most important benefits, is helping us build our relationship and get closer with our Heavenly Father through Christ by helping us build our relationship deeper with Jesus. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for us we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Romans 8.26 This is where I was telling you about we, we do receive benefits after we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, and Christ sends us the Holy Spirit. Now, we at times grow frustrated when God doesn't answer our prayers in our time. We all do that. We all continue to do that. And it doesn't matter whether you're a minister or a custodian or a bus driver or a truck driver or a doctor or a lawyer. It doesn't matter. We all get frustrated because when we hit our 
turmoil or our frustrations or our trials and tribulations and we're in crisis mode we ask God to answer our prayers and there's a lot of times he doesn't answer us quick enough in our time but remember God is never late he knows when the perfect time is to answer our prayers and get us through that crisis or through that situation because he is time he created time now also part of the other benefits to this is that the Holy Spirit will give us the strength to move on during that waiting time that the Father takes in his time to answer our prayers and get us through that. And the frustration confuses us of what to say to God. We all get frustrated. Things happen. And we get frustrated and we sit there and we're trying to pray we don't know what to say. Well, this is another benefit from the Holy Spirit. He knows what's in our heart also. And he knows what needs to be said on our behalf. And he takes our words that we cannot speak and utter, and he takes them to the Father, and he knows how to explain it to the Father. Now, as I come to a close with today's sermon, let's take a look at the benefits a little bit more closely that we graciously received from the Holy Spirit that God has given through Christ, through the Holy Spirit to us. Well, one of the major benefits is to get to know our Heavenly Father more. When we can't pray for what, whatever the reason is, the Spirit takes our prayers to God. We learn more and develop a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit is our helper. He's our guide. He's our intuition, that gut feeling. He's in there. And when danger comes, you get that feeling. That's actually the Holy Spirit saying it's danger, and not necessarily physical danger. It could be spiritual danger. It could be danger that, hey, you're approaching a person, or you have to deal with a person that's evil, that uh, likes to defame or backstab or wicked or wants to bring your downfall, or sabotage you, or whatever way. It's a warning. And thank God that we have the Holy Spirit, because with our sinful nature and being full of sin in this broken world, sometimes discernment, especially in today's world, is very hard for us, because people are so deceitful. Satan uses them so deceitfully, and they don't even know it, that we even get fooled. So that's why we have the Holy Spirit. And if we truly believe and work on that relationship, he guides us and helps us with that. And if our Heavenly Father wills the Holy Spirit, because not everybody gets this gift, we learn to speak in tongues. The Holy Spirit helps us and teaches us how to speak in tongues to the Father. So where only we can have the conversation with the Father through Christ Jesus. But not all of us have that gift. Not every minister has that gift. Not every clergy has that gift. Sometimes God decides who gets what gifts. That's the deal. And that's God's choice. And sometimes people, it's like healers. Sometimes there are healers that can only heal one at a time. Sometimes there are healers that God grants through Christ to heal many. Sometimes there are people that can't heal. We each have our own uh, gift that's technical and unique that our Heavenly Father gives us, and we must use that gift to honor Him. Now, He also helps us with our decisions in making godly decisions. Decisions that Christ would make. You know, and that's, sometimes we make the wrong decisions, but you got to remember, even though the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit, God also told the Holy Spirit, as he told Jesus, and Jesus says it, and the angels did not to interfere with our free will. So the Holy Spirit, if we're making a decision, and God forbid it's the wrong decision, the Holy Spirit will warn us about it, you know, and try to tell us this is the wrong decision, it's not godly, it's not what God wants for you, but we make it anyway, he's still not going to interfere with that. But once we do make that wrong decision, if we happen to do it, which we all do on occasion, the Holy Spirit is there to help us 
get to the Father in prayer to help us correct that or have the Father correct that decision for us and get us out of the mess that we made for ourselves. And he also there, as I said earlier before, that listen up on this one. He's there with us along with God the Father and Jesus his Son on our journey in life every step of the way. He's also there guiding us too. So not only are we got, uh, the Father's temple and him and Jesus dwell within us with the Holy Spirit, as we journey through life, we have God by our side. We have the, the Trinity. We have God the Father by our side. We have Jesus, God the Son by our side. And we have God the Holy Spirit by our side. And if all three are by our side and by your side, there's nobody that can beat you. And as Jesus said, no weapon, if you truly believe and trust in him, no weapon that's formed against you will prosper. Yes, weapons will come against you. Evil people will come against you. The devil will use whatever means he can to get you away from God, to have you stumble and fall because he doesn't like you, he doesn't want you here, and he doesn't want you closer to God. So he, he will do whatever means he can to do his part. But your part is to trust the Lord and continue on that journey. Now these are the benefits that are not to be missed. And there are benefits that are not to be missed. And the benefits that are not to be missed when you do receive the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit will help transform you into a better spiritual person to be more like Christ and to be truly a child of the Most High. And if you haven't already accepted the Lord and Savior, I'm praying and asking you that you do because it'll be the best decision that you ever make in your life and to be baptized if you haven't already and to work on that relationship and when, and talk to the Holy Spirit you know you when you pray you could talk to God you could talk to Jesus you could talk to the Holy Spirit you could pray one day to the Holy Spirit and you could pray one day to Jesus one day to however you feel either way it all gets back to God now a lot of the other benefits when you receive the Holy Spirit is that it lasts forever, for eternity. God is with you, Jesus is with you, the Holy Spirit is with you for eternity in this life and in the life in heaven when you're in paradise and walk in the streets of gold with Jesus and getting to know him more and getting to know the Father and spending time in the presence, the holy presence of our Heavenly Father. So that's a great benefit to have. And the Holy Spirit... And this goes not only for me, but all other ministers and lay people who love spreading the gospel of Jesus and love trying their best to get people back to Jesus. The Holy Spirit will help you with the gospel and teach you what to say and help you deliver your words that the Lord has for them to hear. Now, what a blessing this is to receive this type of gift, especially to have the Spirit, you know, on your journey with you. So today, when you leave the sermon today, I'm going to ask you to please really consider, if you haven't been baptized, be baptized. And it doesn't matter who you get baptized. The best way, if you don't have a church, is to ask our Lord and Savior to guide you to a minister that is qualified or can baptize you, that Jesus gives authority to baptize you, and have that person baptize you. It's the same thing with forgiveness of sins. People say, well, only God forgives sins. Yes, but God also gave Jesus authority in all of heaven and all of earth, and Jesus said, the Son of Man also has the authority to forgive sins. And since Jesus is our judge, and since he does, earth he has the privilege and the right to give whoever he wants to the authority to forgive sins in his name just like he has the authority to have people healed even though he said there's only one healer the father's given him the, the authority because Jesus can heal too to whoever he wishes to heal so pray about it 
be baptized, receive the Holy Spirit, develop your relationship, and help others develop their relationship with our Heavenly Father through Christ. And be that good person, be that light. Get people out of the darkness. Because the darkness, and I'm telling you from my personal experience in 22 years in darkness, only brings misery, misfortune, heartache, and a lot of pain. Turn back to the light. Turn back to Christ. I'm Reverend Tony. Thank you for joining me today as I went live with another sermon. And please, share the sermon. And also, I'm going to suggest something. And I know uh, Dr. Uh, Pastor uh, Charles Stanley does the same thing. And I'd like to start doing the same thing. Is when you go to a, a, a service or, and listen to a sermon, whether it's from Dr. Stanley or whether it's from me or Joyce Meyer or Joel Olstein or Rick Warren or Chuck Swindoll or anybody, if you can, bring a little notepad and take notes. You know, take notes on the title of the sermon, take notes on the verses that we use, because there are other verses that particularly pertain to that sermon also. It's just that the pastor or the reverend, the minister for that particular sermon and that particular day, we each get told by our Heavenly Father through Christ and Jesus helps us and guides us to the passage and the verse that he wants us to use. So you can have a particular sermon like today on receiving the Holy Spirit. And, you know, Joel Osteen will use one verse that the Father feels he should use. Um, Joyce Meyer will use another verse. I'll use a verse pertaining to the same thing. So take notes, read and meditate on it and learn and grow from it. This way you're growing in Christ and developing that. We're here to help you with that. And remember, we're here to give you the message. And as I say it on occasion, I'll say it today, church is about hearing the message. Yes, the singing is good. Jesus loves that. You know, getting to know each other is good. Jesus loves that. But the most important thing Jesus loves is for you to hear the message he has for you because that's the most important thing. Because all of us in church, including the minister or the head pastor or the priest or the father or, or whoever, we're broken too. Just as much, if not more, than you are. See, the church is a hospital and we're all broken. Jesus is the doctor. The minister is not the doctor. We're just a coordinator. We're the shepherd. We're broken as much as you. Jesus is the doctor. So we're all there to help each other heal and to learn more about Christ and asking Christ for his message to get us through the week until next week and to start growing in him so we get to know and be more like him, which is why the Father, one of the reasons why the Father created us, not only to serve him and to have companionship with him, but to get to know his son and to be like his son. Help each other out, because technically, ministers or reverends or doctors or, or fathers or priests or prophet, whatever you want to call yourself or what title, it's just a title. We're all ministers, because we're all God's children. Remember that. And remember one other important thing. God loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit. Please continue to walk in the presence of God. I'll see you again next time as I go live with another sermon. In between, spread the love, spread the peace, spread the forgiveness.